people. There's no people. Hello and welcome back to my bedroom. I'm back home in England. I arrived yesterday and I decided to leave because I was getting a bit scared of the you-know-what spreading around. There were two main reasons why I wanted to go to Korea in the first place and that was to meet people and go on lots of dates. And my two friends from America, they left Korea and it was getting very hard to meet people and go on dates because no one wanted to meet up, no one wanted to go outside unless it was completely necessary. Then even when girls agreed to go on a date with me, they would wear that stupid face mask which made it very difficult to understand what they were saying because they would sound really muffled. And then I couldn't do my moves because how am I supposed to kiss someone when they're wearing a stupid face mask? And then people kept asking me why wasn't I wearing a mask in the comment section and that's because the masks don't actually help. Everyone seems to be brainwashed into thinking that if they wear a face mask then they're safe from catching anything which is just a load of rubbish. Any medical professional will tell you that the masks are completely ineffective. You need a proper mask that's sealed tightly to your face and has a respirator that can filter out tiny particles to stop the particles from going into your lungs and you need goggles as well because the virus can actually get into your eyes and infect you that way. So those silly little flimsy masks that everyone's so desperate to get their hands on are completely useless. They're only any good if you actually have the virus because it will stop you from coughing all over the place and spreading it that way but if you have it then you really shouldn't be outside in the first place. Anyway so the reason why I decided to leave Korea and come back home to England was because I didn't really want to get trapped in Korea if things started to get even worse and the airport started closing down and I didn't have any friends and nobody wanted to meet up. It really didn't sound too appealing to be stuck in Korea in that kind of situation. And I kept thinking to myself, why am I risking my life staying in this country when I have no friends, my only friends have left, I find I'm finding it difficult to get dates and even the dates I go on they just reject me or they unmatch me or they don't even want to meet up a second time I have nothing else to do in this country might as well leave so I left and I'm back home in my bedroom and it's so nice to be back home I was I was going crazy being stuck in that tiny little Korean Airbnb which was about the same size as my bedroom and now I'm in this massive house back in my parents house and I've got this huge garden. I've got my gaming computer in the background, I've got my favourite knife, I've got my Xbox controller, I've got a kitchen downstairs that has everything, an oven, a toaster, a grill, knives and a frying pan. So yes I am pretty happy to be back home. It's strange being back home so quickly because I only just left this place about two months ago after I came back for Christmas, now I'm back here already. <laughs> And it's only, it's only the beginning of March, but I'm very glad to be home because I didn't really want to leave in the first place. I actually wanted to stay longer, but I got dragged back to Japan straight after Christmas. Now that I'm a free single man again, I can go anywhere I want to and do anything I want to. The atmosphere in Korea shortly before I left was very strange. There was this very heavy, dark, tense kind of atmosphere everywhere you went because of the virus spreading. Everywhere was kind of deserted. I went on a date with this Japanese girl on Friday night, last Friday evening, and there were just not many people around. We went to a shopping mall and it was kind of empty. We went to a cafe and it was completely deserted. We were the only people there. And I thought the date went pretty well. I mean, I talked a lot, I asked her questions. She even said she was going to introduce me to her friend and that she would contact me again, we could hang out again. And then I got home checks tinder and she unmatched me couldn't believe it i've never been unmatched after a date before i felt so insulted 
And then when I got onto the aeroplane, it was completely empty. Well, not completely, but it felt like it was almost empty. There were hardly any people. There were so many empty seats. I had two empty seats next to me so I could just lie down. It was actually the best plane trip that I've ever had. I just lay down, fell asleep. It was great. Those idiots who wasted their money in business class could have just gotten the same thing for economy price if they just chose economy. Anyway, now that I've gotten the boring explanation bit over, yes, I'm back home in England. Korea was a bit of a failure as a trip. I don't know, was it really a failure? I got, I did accomplish a few of the things that I set out to do. Went on a few dates, met some people, had some fun. I just didn't really feel like there was any point in staying any longer, so I think I made the right decision in leaving. <sighs> I need to get my bedroom sorted out. Whilst I was away, this mountain of junk suddenly appeared. And look what I have. Dun, da, da, da. I finally got my 100,000 subscriber YouTube reward, award, plaque thingamajig hiding in my room for passing. Presented to hiding in my room for passing 100,000 subscribers. YouTube. Yes, I'm very happy with this. And look, it came in a box. I'll show you the box. Unfortunately, I didn't get on, 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 on. I need you better change it. Let me see. Is it new? Wow. Yeah, give me your old one. It's plastic. Yeah, like ten pound. Give me one. Give me twenty pound or not then. I don't have any twenty pounds. I've got one. What you got here? Sixty thousand one. Why did you buy thing in the airport? I did. What did you buy? Bought a sandwich. Wow. You should use all this. It's not much. It's about Buy me butter, forty. I think it's forty pounds, maybe. Oh my goodness! So much money. My YouTube reward award. She doesn't care. What was I saying? Oh yeah, unfortunately, I wasn't able to unbox it myself because at the time, I think I was in Japan or Korea and my mum opened it. But this is what they sent to me. Oh no, my address. Please don't dox me. So there's the black box, black box there. And then they give you this card. Recognize your team. And a little packet of something. Congratulations on your subscriber milestone. We are honored to take part in recognizing your achievement and want your experience to be exceptional. This award was inspected and packaged with great care by Rick. Oh, thank you, Rick. If your award was damaged during shipping or if you have any questions, blah, blah, blah. And there's also a letter from Susan. You've just done something that very few YouTube creators accomplish. You had an astonishing 100,000 people subscribe to your channel. Yeah, well, where are my 100,000 subscribers now? My videos barely even get over 20k views most of the time. So I'm sorry if I don't sound too over the moon for achieving 100k subs when most of them don't even watch anymore. Thank you very much. Sometimes I just get annoyed seeing that I have 100,000 subscribers and then most of them don't even watch my channel anymore. It just feels kind of insulting. Anyway, I guess moaning about it isn't going to bring them back or make them start watching again. So I guess I'll just shut up and say thank you very much for my 100k subs award, guys. Couldn't have done it without you. I was so worried when I got to the airport because the... Day before when I was doing a live stream, I accidentally leaked my flight details. So stupid of me. I was trying to show messages that my mum sent me and I forgot that I sent her a message telling her the time of my arrival. And people were leaking my flight number and my arrival time. Fortunately, no one showed up, which was great. And I took a taxi back home. It was a little bit awkward. In the beginning, I did talk to the taxi driver a little bit. He was a friendly, nice guy, but he kept telling me random things. He would say things like, did you know there were, there are 6.5 million cars on the roads at all times? Um, no, I didn't know that. Good, good info to know, I guess. Oh, Mrs. Bimo. Hello. People wanted to see you. How have you been? Mm-hmm. 
Hmm? That's fascinating. Did you miss me? Did you miss me? <laughs> My best friend, Mrs. Mimo. The weather is a bit gloomy, cloudy and rainy, but I like it. I don't like it when it's sunny because it is too bright and it makes my eyes hurt. How about you, Mrs. Mimo? Do you like the rain? Meow, meow, meow. Meow, meow, meow. Meow, meow, meow. Anyway, I think that's enough for today's video. I'll tell you what my plans are for the upcoming months in the next video, because this video is 100% getting demonetized because I talked about this stupid virus. It was a bit surprising when I landed at Heathrow Airport because they didn't do any kind of checks or examinations to make sure we didn't bring anything into the country. I mean, we all came from South Korea and we, any one of us, we could have been at the city called Daegu, which was where, you know, those religious people were spreading it. I don't know, maybe they were doing secret thermal camera checks from behind a screen scanning us but i didn't see any cameras with the thermal imaging and they didn't even ask us any questions or take our temperature or do any kind of inspection they just scanned our passports and let us go out of the airport i'm pretty sure i don't have the virus i feel i feel fine i don't have a fever or anything I don't even have a cough so hopefully i'm not a super spreader Super spreader Daniel, back from South Korea. Watch out, England. Ha <laughs> ha.